Have you tried generating blog posts with AI, but have been getting mediocre results? Well, in this video, we will build an automated blog writing AI system that does research and aims for quality versus just cheap automation. A big issue with writing articles with AI is unless your topic is very general, the LLM typically doesn't have enough quality information to synthesize anything other than generic content. And while that's fine if all you need is a bunch of text, it's not something you'd want to publish on your blog, at least not in most cases. So to avoid that, we will automate doing research, get the data from that research, and then feed that into the LLM to get the results that are much better. The goal of the automation is not, ironically, to achieve 100% automation, but to get the results that are as high quality as possible while still requiring minimal input from you. Here is a high level overview. First, we will generate a list of topics using a research model, and then we will store that list into a Google spreadsheet for human review. The reason for this is I found some topics are just going to be too hard for the AI to write high quality content about, or are simply not topics we want to cover for other reasons. Given the list of topics, we will need to read what they're about and decide if we want a blog post about that or not. If we do, we will mark it as ready to generate, and that will trigger our second automation. Now, in our second automation, we first get our rows, and then we filter only those that are marked as ready to generate. Then we kick off perplexity to generate keywords for us. So what we're after is the main keyword we're going to try to rank for, and then a list of long tail keywords as well. We use perplexity because that gives us up-to-date information. And then again, using perplexity, we do research. So this is where we basically give it the topic and the description, and we say we want to gather information about this. So we will get back a whole bunch of references or articles on that particular topic. From this, we are going to scrape that content. Um, and I use Firecrawl here. And then with all that content, we're going to feed that into the LLM to generate the actual article. Now, because now it's not just using its knowledge, which may be outdated or not contain information about that particular topic, uh, we are now actually feeding it a bunch of articles. So typically it will be 10 or so articles um, that contain information about the topic. And we're asking it to generate an article based on that. Here I'm using Anthropic as the model, but you can of course use whatever you feel um, gives you the best output. Now articles without images are pretty boring. And so I use AI to generate the images as well. So here I'm using Ideogram to generate the images. And in the original uh, article writing prompt, I'm asking the, um, the LLM to give me the prompts for those images and places where I'm supposed to insert them. So generate the images, we then create a Google Doc with the content of the blog post of the article and also update the sheets to say that it has been generated and then we put in the um, URLs of those articles. I store everything in a Google Drive folder. So this is our blog topics. And then this is an example of a article that has been written. So for my particular use case, I need this in Markdown, which is why this is the format. But you can of course use another format that works for your blogging system. And these are the placeholders that can then be used to put the uh, generated images in. So let's dive into how to actually build this. The automation that generates the topics is manually triggered. And this is just because normally you would do this once for your blog. It's not something you would run all the time. And so when you want to run it, um, you would trigger this manually. Now in here, I'm using um, an O3 mini model. This is because it's got higher reasoning capacities and I want really high quality output for these uh, topics. Now we tell it it's an expert marketer, content writer, and then we ask uh, it to create a comprehensive content plan and schedule for the blog. Now we give it the topic again, because this is not meant to be run many times in an automated fashion. Uh, this is hard coded. So we say the website is plumbing services. We're located in Amsterdam. So we want some of the content to be relevant locally. Um, then I give it the list of services. We offer drain cleaning, relining, emergency repairs, and so on. So it's got a little bit more context about what our company actually does. And then I ask it to come up with a content strategy and 100 blog post titles and short descriptions that we can use them to create the complete blog 
uh, over the next year or so. We ask it to output the titles and descriptions in JSON format um, and give it an example of what that should look like. So this is, uh, I pin the output here, just so you don't have to wait for all this to run, but basically it will give us a whole bunch of titles and descriptions. Now, once we've got this, this is going to be uh, a one item, one output. We split it out because we want to insert multiple rows and we insert those rows into Google Sheets. So we just put in title and description. And as I showed before, this is what that looks like in Google Sheets. So this is the 100 uh, topics and descriptions that it generated. Now, as I said, I think this should be controlled or approved by a human. And the reason for that is sometimes the LLM will just create topics that we simply don't want to publish or they don't quite make sense from the, from an industry perspective, even though semantically, language-wise, it kind of makes sense, uh, but it's not really something we want on our blog. So for example, the first one says, top 10 signs your plumbing needs emergency repairs. Now, if you need emergency repairs, you most likely know that. If you have a burst pipe, if you have a blocked toilet, like you know you need your repairs. So I would probably change this to say, uh, 10 signs your plumbing needs attention, needs preventative maintenance, needs repairs, or something along those lines, um, not calling it needs emergency repairs. So actually, let's do that. So I will uh, change this. I'll just say repairs um, and remove the description here so it doesn't say emergency either. Now, this has already been generated previously, but we will trigger, trigger the automation again. So I will mark it as ready to generate. Now our blog generation automation would normally, if it was active, it would pick this up and run automatically, but I want to run this manually to show you how it works. So we have the trigger that um, listens for updates to rows, and then we are going to filter the ones where the status is equal to ready to generate. So if I run this, we are keeping only one item here, which is the um, article I have just marked as ready to generate. And then we're going to generate keywords. Now I'm going to unpin the this data and let's run this. So this goes to perplexity and perplexity is going to come back with a list of keywords, the top of which is going to be the um, main keyword where we are uh, targeting and then the rest are long tail keywords we also want to incorporate into our article. From here, we kick off perplexity research. Again, I'm gonna unpin this. Um, and what's happening here is we're saying, you're a helpful research assistant, uh, given a topic, you need to provide a set of reference material I can use in writing a blog post about that topic. So I say, avoid explanations and stick to facts because we don't really care. We're not going to use the actual output of perplexity. I found that to usually not be adequate to use as a final uh, article output. So all we want is for perplexity to find related articles that are relevant for this topic and description. And then we're going to use that as information when generating the article. And then we say, here is the content, that's the topic, that's the description. And if we run this, it's going to come up, it will still give us a little bit of a description, but it's also going to come up with a bunch of citations. And these are the old articles that are relevant for us that we are going to then uh, use as information when generating the article. So we've got citations, there's a whole bunch here. And the next step is going to be to split this out because it's a one item and we want to scrape all of these. Now I'm using a free tier of Firecrawl, which gives you 10 requests per minute. So if I try to run all these 20, 10 of them are going to succeed, 10 are going to fail. I'm fine with that. I don't really care about capturing all 20. Uh, but of course, you could do that for a little bit more context. So if I unpin this and I test the step, what, I, what we're doing is we're sending it all of these citations. So we're, we're sending it the URLs and saying we want the content back. So Firecrawl is going to give us the output in markdown format, which is perfect for feeding into the LLM. So we, we have seven of these items. We aggregate them all into one. So that's one input into the LLM. And here I'm using Anthropic because I, I feel it gives me the best output for this type of scenario. Um, the instruction is to write the blog post. And now we tell it it's a master SEO and copywriter. Task is to compile the information provided. So this is all the information provided. As you can see, it's quite a lot 
there's a lot of these um, these articles and each of them will have a full markdown. This doesn't really render properly in the interface here. And we want a thoughtful, comprehensive SEO optimized blog post. Uh, we will provide topic, description, main keyword to target, as well as additional long tail keywords uh, to optimize for. And additionally, we will get several websites. So that's this information here to use for reference and data. Now we tell it to not invent information as we know uh, LLMs can do that sometimes. And if it's not provided in the source material or as part of your existing knowledge, do not use it. Now we ask it to write in a professional, no frills, efficient way without any fluff. And the reading level should be fifth grade. And we're looking for about two to 4,000 word articles. Where appropriate, uh, suggest to use images. Now, this is the part where we are asking it to create prompts that we will then use to generate images with um, an image generation uh, LLM. So where appropriate, suggest to use images. For each image that should be part of the article, we, in, we ask you to include a placeholder. Now, I ask you to include these placeholders because that allows us later, without using AI again, to just do text replacement and replace these placeholders with links to the generated images. So there's going to be image one, two, image three, because I tell it to use two to three images. And I emphasize those placeholders should be at the point of the article where the image should be um, inserted. So I want that part to be automatic and do not use any other images in the article because I have found it sometimes would just pull um, images from these art other articles that uh, we're giving it as information. That's not really useful. We don't, we don't want to be using other people's images either. Now always include two to three images for each article spread through the text. And then in the output, we ask you to include prompts to use with an AI image generation tool to generate the images. And the article itself should be markdown format. Now, this is specific to, to the blogging system that I use because it uh, uses markdown as the source to render blogs. But you may, of course, want this to be HTML or just plain text format, depending on how your blog is structured. Finally, we say that the output should be a JSON object. Uh, in the following format. So we want the article and then we want a list of images. If I run this, this takes a bit of time because we're feeding it uh, a whole lot of uh, information. So typically I found it gets about 70 to 100,000 tokens as input. So be aware of that as well in terms of the cost. If you wanted to reuse that, you could of course feed it with fewer articles. So you could say when you're getting the information from perplexity, you could limit that to three articles or five articles or depending on um, what you feel is enough. Now, here's our article. This is in markdown format. And then at the end, we have a list of images and these are descriptions. These are prompts we are going to use next to generate those images. So we're splitting them out because we want to generate each one separately. We want to um, run. Oh, let me just uh, unpin this. We're going to run this again. So it's a professional photo of water dripping from a faucet at low pressure. And then we've got close up photo of rusted discolored water flowing from a chrome faucet. And finally, a professional photo of a modern uh, water meter with visible digital display showing high usage numbers. So that's what it came up with for this particular article. And then we use ideogram. Now ideogram doesn't have at least I couldn't find a node in N8N, but it's a pretty simple request. So we're just posting to this URL. We need authorization, of course, and then we're giving it a request where there's a prompt. So these are the prompts and we want it to be in landscape format. And we're using the 2A Turbo uh, model to generate the images. So if I do this, I should be getting three images back. It's actually quite fast com considering that it's generating images, whereas just generating that article from all the data was taking quite a bit longer. And then again, there's a bit of uh, back and forth here, which is normal for N810, where you need to split and aggregate information, depending on whether you want to use all the information as input as one input or whether you want to run something multiple times. So in this case, we've got all, all three images that we want to use as one input, and we're going to create a Google document. Now, the Google document is going to be um, the same name as the title of the um, article we are generating. After we've created the document, we're going to uh, populate it with the content. Now, this is pretty simple. 
This is just the, um, we remember, we take the ID of the just created document and we put the uh, content of the article in the body. So if I run this, this should show up in my Google Drive. And then finally, uh, in Google Sheets, we're just going to update some columns. So in this case, um, we are matching by title. You might want to match by something else if you have multiple titles that are the same, but generally I found that there do not really be any clashes and we are um, storing the document ID. This is just so that later, if we want to do something with that document, for example, insert the images, we can do that, we can reference it. Then we store the prompts that were used for image generation. And then finally, we store the URLs of the generated images. And of course, I forgot, we update the status to generated so that we don't pick this up again. Now, if I run this, I should be seeing all these updates. Now, if I go into my Google Drive here, this is the one that I generated previously, and this is the one that doesn't have the word emergency inside. So if I look inside, this is the article, and it's fairly well written. It talks about the 10 signs your plumbing needs repairs, which are all reasonable um, items like foul odors, water discoloration, strange noises, and so on. And then at the end, it says, it has a, a section where it's talking about when you need to call a professional and how a lot of problems require uh, professional expertise. And so then it warns people that, you know, they shouldn't be ignoring these signs and all. So all in all, a reasonably well-written article that can serve its purpose as having content on our website so that if we are a plumbing service, it's not just about and what services we provide, but there's actually value in terms of the content that's on the website. And hopefully we can capture some of the organic traffic uh, for that content. Now, if I look back into the spreadsheet, you can see that the status has been updated to generated and some other fields have been filled out as well. So we've got a document ID and then the prompts. Let's see what the images generated actually look like. So this is one, not too bad. I guess you can, you could use one of, you could use this one, um, this one. Yep, definitely looks pretty good. So we've got a rusty pipe and you've got some rusty water. And then this one is supposed to be a water meter with some high usage numbers. So this is an example of one where I probably wouldn't be using this one, but maybe regenerating this a couple of times might actually give you a good result. So the idea makes sense, but the meter that we got out along with the numbers that are on it probably don't make too much sense. It does look kind of artificial, so probably not something you'd want to use um, in your blog. And that's exactly why that step is now, or the next step would be human intervention to have a look at the article, maybe edit, change the article, remove things or add things. Also uh, review the photos, regenerate if necessary. And then from there, you might want to go to actually publishing. Also, if you have previous articles published, you should feed one or two of them to the LLM as an example of what your writing style should look like so that the whole blog is more congruent. And so those are, there are a few of these manual steps, but even with these, this, this speeds up blog writing at least tenfold. You can easily publish one article per day in maybe five or 10 minutes of work. Now, before we finish, I also want to address a couple of other issues. First of all, this is just what the technology can do and how to do it. What you want to do with your blog is your choice. I don't think mass generating hundreds of low quality blog posts is doing anyone any good. In fact, with all the AI generated content flooding the internet, it's questionable for how much longer it will make any sense to even have a blog. But if you are a small business without the resources to churn out large amounts of content written by humans, this can still help you capture some of the organic traffic and it can simply help your website have a little larger footprint. In my view, the key here is balance. Spend some time making sure everything you publish is high quality instead of just focusing on volume. And the results just might be worth the effort. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you've got any questions, leave them down in the comments. See you next time.